Let's talk about biofuel. Hi friends, and welcome back to Raft. I'm finally back with another installment of my guides for chapter 3, where I'll cover all of the new features and gameplay mechanics, and how you can use them to your advantage in your own playthrough. It's been long awaited, but we're finally covering biofuel today. I'll go over both types of refiners with their strengths and weaknesses, and everything you can put in those refiners with the exact numbers so you can determine the best fuel for your setup. And then we'll go over how you can set up your pipes for both aesthetic and functional use. If you find this guide useful or you just enjoy the video, consider subscribing to the channel. It would be much appreciated. But without further ado, let's get into the fifth installment of my guides for chapter 3, Biofuel, Refiners, and Pipes. So to make biofuel, you'll need to unlock the biofuel refiners, which means you'll need to have partially completed the game's story, so beware of some minor spoilers ahead. The blueprint for the simple biofuel refiner can be found inside the ranger station on Balboa Island on the table immediately inside on the left. The advanced biofuel refiner is a lot further ahead in the story in Temperance. You'll find that blueprint at the top of the spiral stairs inside of the big igloo. Obviously, you'll need biofuel refiners to have a consistent source of biofuel, although you can technically get it occasionally from some of the loot crates scattered around the world. But now that you have access to the refiners, let's talk about how to use them. The simple refiner can be placed almost anywhere, and it isn't confined to Raft's building grid, meaning you can be a lot more space efficient with it, and it only occupies a footprint of one square at the cost of not being automated and only having enough storage space to make two biofuel cans at once. The advanced refiner is confined to the building grid, but it only occupies two squares to produce a maximum of six biofuel cans at once. This one can also be automated by hooking it up to your fuel pipe network, which we'll talk more about later. Also keep in mind that you'll always need one jar of honey to produce one biofuel, so farming up some sand and having a healthy bee farm is heavily advised. However, the exact list of resources you can use to make the bulk of the fuel is pretty long and pretty varied, so let's move into more details about all of that stuff. Pretty much any raw food item can be converted into biofuel, but not all food items are created equal. The cheapest and easiest to farm raw foods are of course the beets and potatoes, which each require a full stack to create just one biofuel. Again, the advantage to these is that they're super easy to farm large quantities of, but that's about it. Next are strawberries and bananas, which require 10 of each per biofuel. These are less easy to farm consistent large quantities of, so I definitely wouldn't recommend this method, but you can certainly do it if you want to. Coconuts, mangoes, and pineapples, and even raw pomfrets and herrings each require 5 items per biofuel, giving us another use for some of the mid-tier food items that you usually end up throwing out or just ignoring. It's worth noting that a lot of the following items also have partial decimals as to how many it technically takes you to make one biofuel, but I've given the average number you'll need to actually make anything useful. Some are slightly more than the exact whole number and some are slightly less, so it evens out over time, and frankly I doubt that most of you really care that it technically takes 3.07 raw mackerel or tilapia and 3.33 eggs to make one can of fuel. More practically, you'll need 7 of the tilapia or mackerel to fill this small biofuel refiner, and 6 raw meat or eggs to do the same thing to make 2 biofuel. Raw drumsticks are slightly more efficient, so you'll need 2.5 for biofuel, which is the same with whole watermelons. Watermelons are slightly weird because each half of the watermelon counts as its own object, so it's actually directly on par with the other fruits, but it doesn't seem like it due to its double usage. Raw catfish, raw salmon, red berries, cave mushrooms, and even buckets of milk from goats only require two of each to make one can of fuel. So that also gives goats something more to contribute to, although I think clucker eggs are still more of a viable animal product in terms of biofuel production, since it requires a lot less active management from you. Again, cave shrooms and red berries are technically in the partial decimal camp, but you will still need either two of each or four of each to fuel the simple and advanced refiners accordingly. So is the raw shark meat, which actually caps out the raw foods category with just three pieces to fill the small refiner, so just one and a half shark meat per fuel can, basically. But one of the sneaky new features that was introduced with Chapter 3 allows us to convert more than just raw food into biofuel as the ability to convert animal heads into biofuel was added so that they stop clogging up your storage and actually giving you a reason to harvest heads again anytime you harvest an enemy that you murder. Generally speaking, all animal heads grant biofuel on a 1 to 1 ratio, so one head equals one fuel can, which is a pretty good deal if you ask me. However, there are also two special items that you can use for the highest biofuel output of any single item. Those two items would be the heads from Mama Bear from Balboa Island and Alpha from Utopia. 
Each one of these heads produces three biofuel cans, so you definitely only want to use these in your advanced biofuel refiners, as you'll lose a third of their value in these simple refiners. Sadly, you can't use the Rhino Shark Trophy at all to make biofuel, and that's probably because it's just too powerful to turn into liquid anyways. So that's how you go about making biofuel, and now let's get into its uses. There are a total of three items that you can use biofuel with, and those are the old school battery charger, the fuel tank, and the engine. The engine is probably the most important use, especially with the introduction of the windmill to passively charge batteries instead of all of the fossil fuels that we were burning up with the old traditional charger. However, fuel cans can technically have a capacity of 60 fuel, but an engine can only hold 50 fuel units at a time. That means when you put your biofuel cans directly into your engines, you're actually operating at a 17% loss. You can mitigate that loss by using the aforementioned fuel tanks, as the fuel that you put into a tank will be automatically distributed to the proper machines until they reach the max capacity, and the rest is stored in the tank, making the process lossless. That is, unless you overfill your tanks, but honestly that's on you. However, you can guarantee that things mostly work out in your favor by just automating the whole process with the advanced biofuel refiner. The best way to connect all of these machines and guarantee you get the advantages of the lossless system is of course by using fuel pipes. These pipes simply distribute all of your fuel to wherever it needs to go so long as it is connected to one of these little outlet spokes. But the pipes themselves can sometimes get in the way, and if that's the case for you, let's talk about some of the ways you can ease your piping frustrations and clean up your raft designs a little bit. There are four different kinds of wall blocks that you can just pass pipes straight through if you don't want to deal with the hassle of putting a hole in your boat just to have aesthetic fuel setups, or if you're looking for a more direct route from point A to point B. With all of these blocks, all kinds of wall textures work, so it doesn't matter if you're using thatch walls, cheap wood, or the expensive wood, it will always work even when it doesn't look like it should. Just note that you'll generally need to place the wall piece first, and then the pipes on either side for this to work. The wall blocks that work are as follows. Half windows, which you can make look a bit cleaner by using a painted curtain on one side, upside down triangles, doors, and normal windows so long as you bring the pipes up to the correct height to go through the window part of the window. For the doors, just make sure that the door is open when you place the pipes, and leave it open when you exit your world for the best results. It's also worth noting that you can actually go through solid walls so long as you know that it will be directly connected to one of those fuel spigots we talked about earlier. That means battery chargers, engines, as long as it has one of those little connector thingies directly next to the wall, you could pipe directly through it with no problems. There also used to be a glitch that allowed you to put pipes through floors using the floating triangle glitch, but this was sadly patched out in one of the Chapter 3 hotfixes and it no longer works, which is very sad in my opinion. If you want to get those pipes out of your way using another method, you can actually destroy any platform that a pipe is placed on, and the pipe will remain floating so long as it is supported by another pipe that touches some sort of ground. So floors, foundations, if you can place a pipe on it, then you can destroy it to make some floating pipes, saving yourself some extra floor space. And that's the gist about how you can make and use biofuel to its fullest potential in your own raft playthroughs. If you have other things that you'd like to see guides for in the future, or some more questions about biofuel, be sure to leave it down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer as many questions as I can. Anyways, that's it for me for now. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider leaving a like if you did, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really helps me out. I hope to see you all again soon, but until then, have a great day.